So I know I'm a bit late on this trend or bandwagon, whatever you want to call it, but about a year ago, the Flash trailer released, and in there, it was teased that Michael Keaton would return as Batman. So I think it's time for some explaining to do. A uh, little not-so-known fact about me, unless you're one of my friends. Michael Keaton is my favorite Batman actor, like, ever. Yes, I like him even more than Christian Bale. Not saying anything against Christian Bale, just that I grew up with Michael Keaton's movies. And the soundtrack you know from the Lego games. But I'm not here to talk about the movie, at least not yet. And I'm here to talk about the figures, because, you know, I do toy reviews, and I haven't done a movie review. Well, I tried, but that went horribly. So anyways, why don't we get started with, well, you know, a Batman figure from Michael Keaton's movie. So, I mean, yeah, from far away he looks like, you know, just a normal Batman figure, but he does have a lot of detail from the original 1989 movie. Like his oval belt that I don't really see in a lot of other Batman media. You know, he typically has like that square belt. And it's kind of hard to pick up on the camera, but he has the, uh, the weird mutated Batman symbol, you know, that originally people thought was the inside of someone's mouth. He also, uh, you know, he's got a decent likeness to Michael Keaton. He has the, uh, the pattern in the back, you know, his, uh, the sprayed on Nike boots, uh, no Nike logo for obvious legal reasons, but overall this, this figure's pretty detailed, so why don't we get on to the articulation. So, um, as for articulation, this is a old Mattel DC Multiverse 4-inch figure, rest in peace, better than McFarlane, from what I know. Uh, so articulation, you know, unlike the movie, he can move his head all around. His shoulders also around, but this leather pleather cape gets in the way. They can move out. He can bend, and his wrist moves. He also can turn fully at the waist, kick front that far, barely any back. He can do the splits. He's got a uh, thigh swivel, and they bend at the knee, and that's about it. As for his accessories, and no, you're not on crack, there is another one right there. But this is the better looking one, because this one has, like, some splotches. Uh, he, he, he comes with, with one accessory, this grappling hook, which, raising his hand up right there, you can just kind of slide in and, you know, you can bust Joker's kneecaps. But, uh... I guess this isn't really an accessory, but might as well count it as one. Uh, I don't have the box, because, you know, I was a child when I got this, but I, I have this card it came with, you know, it says Batman, Mattel, and it has a, has a photo. So yeah, you know, it's, it's nice. Uh, but that's not all, you know, I have other 1989 figures, this is just part one, so let's move these to the side and move on with the next one. So besides Batman himself, we have another famous piece from the movie, and probably one of the most iconic movie cars of all time, the 1989 Jada Toys Batmobile. Uh, this thing is one of the best pieces in my 89 collection. It's a small collection, but it's good. So it's a car, you know, it moves up and down, like that. It has some detail, like the bat symbols there. Underside, that's it, you know, exhaust pipes, this is a big piece, so I kind of have to move it around the front, kind of like that, this is, it, it looks loose, but it's not, and we also, uh, you know, the thing can slide open, let me get a light in there for more detail, yeah, you know, it's got some decent detail, I've really got to dust this thing, uh, it's got hubcaps, this front this back part right here can uh, open to reveal the engine. Oh, and of course, another part of the movie is when Batman straight up guns people down. Not really, but he uses guns, surprisingly. And it comes from, let's slide this back, 
just flipping these little things right here. And boom, you can now shoot the Joker down because Batman was sick of him always escaping. So yeah, this is uh, the Jada Toys Batmobile. The box is also gone again. I kind of, I didn't have enough room. Plus it was a box. Uh, it comes with this small little Batman, you know. It's, it's, it's a Batman figure. It doesn't move. It's nice. It's metal. Uh, the eyes aren't as white eyes, unlike the movie, but it's pretty detailed, you know. Rubbery cape with white, so it kind of eh, looks good from some angles. But yeah, they got the mutated bat symbol and everything, so I mean, it looks pretty good. But that's not all. I also have a second car, a smaller one, but yeah, we'll get into that right now. This isn't as accurate as the other Batmobile just shown, but this is older. I had this one for longer when I was but a wee little child. So this would typically go with this one. Uh, it's a uh, Hot Wheels, you know, not as much detail, but, you know, still pretty good. Doesn't have the side things, but, I mean, you can still pick this up in Walmart now, just in different packaging, but really it's the same thing. It can also slide up, and that's about it. I had a Hot Wheel, like a very small one. This is typically large for one. That would, yeah, but that's gone now. But, uh, we have one more thing left, and then that would be... Time for size comparisons. Now this technically isn't a 1989 Batman figure, but it looks a lot like it with the oval belt and all that. And plus, it was my first Batman figure, and it looks fairly decent to be in the 1989 collection. And that is a the Batman figure that looks a lot like Keaton. I mean, of course, it still has a cartoony head sculpt, and this was my first Batman action figure ever, actually. Like, I got him at a thrift shop. And, uh, yeah, it shows. He has bite marks for my dog and a custom cape because he never came with one. The tape is recent. He broke in half and I didn't want to throw him out because, again, he was my first Batman figure. So I just kind of taped him together. But, uh, his articulation, he can move his head around. But since he's so old, I kind of move, can move his whole collar. His, uh, arm can go all around and can bend like that. His waist could swivel, but... You know, it's broken in half, so it kind of it kind of can't. But he can kick front fairly far and back pretty far. I've got to be very careful. This thing will break the tape. And uh, he's got a knee bend, and that's about it. You know, that's my first ever Batman figure, and I'm glad he looks a lot like the Keaton Batman. So now it's on to size comparisons. Only for the figures, I am not doing the cars. So starting with uh, the 89 figure himself, let's compare him to my other 4-inch DC Multiverse figure and my only one, the Arkham Origins Batman, which was my first DC Multiverse figure ever, if you can stand. And, I mean, Keaton Batman's taller than Origins. Go cry about it, gamers, but, you know, I actually like the Origins. I have it on 3DS. And then let's compare him to my other movie Batman figures. So next we have Batman 89, and uh, Christian Bale's Batman, both standing together. This was my first store-bought Batman figure, so brand new. But, uh, yeah, they, they scale pretty good together. And, you know, it's two amazing Batmans put together. And just because I felt like it, I kind of grabbed the rest of my movie trilogy Batman figures from Christopher Nolan's. And who knows, if you really want, I might do a whole review slash retrospective on these as well. But now we have a couple more figures left for this one, and then we can compare them, uh, the other ones. So, here we have him next to my only animated Batman figures, and that is uh, the 2003 Hasbro Battle Damage Batman with Catwoman. This one looks a lot like the Returns one, so I might throw her in just kind of, you know, next to Batman for a Batman Returns thing. But other than that, you know, these are also pretty good figures. I might do a review on them as well. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, they don't scale perfectly. The Batman and Catwoman look better together, but this, this Batman's pretty tall. But, you know, he's also voiced by the GOAT, Kevin Conroy. Maybe forever rest in peace. But let's move on to the last two figures. I need to compare with this one, and then we can move on to comparing with the other guys.
So here we have him compared to my basic Ben Affleck Batman figure. Not the multiverse, just the basic one. They both came with one accessory, a grapple, and I got them both around the same time. So, you know, this one's more weathered because I used them more for just, again, I was a chap when I got these. But uh, obviously they don't scale well together. But, you know, it's glad to see them both hopefully returning in the Flash movie if Ezra Miller hasn't screwed that over already. But let's get into the last one to compare to this guy, and that is my last, well, latest review, which was another Batman figure. So he is compared to my uh, most recent DC Multiverse figure, the, uh, well, not really, but the DC Multiverse Batman Super Friends, two of my most favorite Batman figures compared. Again, this is a six-inch figure, this is like a four-inch figure, so they don't compare very well, but, you know, one's a nice classic comic version and one's a nice classic movie version so yeah if you're into that pick these both up you probably have a better time picking him up than him i don't know but yeah now it's on to move to the other guy and then yeah picking up where the 89 batman left we have the batman figure next to him and they they scale i don't know all right, I guess, you know, this is about the size Robin could be for this one, but, like, yeah, they still don't scale pretty good together. This one's, like, so tall you can't even see him in frame, so just gotta pull the camera back. Yeah, they don't really scale well, but they do look decent. Both of them, they look really good. So it's on to the next one. So here he is next to the Ben Affleck Batman. I thought these would scale better together, but they also don't. He's still taller than this one. But, you know, again, different sizes, different years. This is like 2007 and this is 2016 or 2015. I can't remember. I haven't seen Batman vs. Superman in a long time. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's Affleck and the Batman together. So, here he is compared to the animated Batman figures. Two animated Batmans together. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's it. It's on to the Christopher Nolan figures, and then we're done comparing him. So here he is next to all the uh, Christopher Nolan and the Blackgate figure. Almost forgot about him. But, uh, yeah, you know, he towers over all of them because this is like a 5-inch figure, and these are 3 and 3 quarter inch 4-inch, I don't know, close to each other. But, uh, yeah, that's it. And just because I don't want to go through the same hassle with the little Batman figure from that Batmobile here is, he is smaller than the mall, smaller than three three quarter inches, he's like two inches, maybe, I don't know, I don't have a roller, and I'm too lazy to get one, but yeah, that's them all combined, and of course we gotta put them all together for the last, last size comparison, and that is the big three, the ones that always typically appear in my, uh, reviews, like order of reviews, we have my first review, the Mego. Action Jackson, let me just get him to stand. And yeah, 8 inch figure towering over everyone. What are the odds? And then we have uh, my second review, the NECA 1954 Godzilla, which completely killed Batman, but he's Batman, he always comes back. Just like in actuality, Godzilla towers over them all. And then we have, uh, we have my Optimus Prime, my third review. And yeah. That's, that's them all compared, but we can't forget one, and that's the one I've started to throw in more. That is my Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be kinda in them all, because, you know, he's Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. My favorite Spider-Man and my favorite Batman. That's, that's cool. But, you know, again, 8-inch figure towering over them all. But, yeah, basically, uh, that's it. So that was my, uh... Batman 1989 review slash retrospective, if it even was a retrospective, I don't know. You know, I hope you enjoyed, and maybe I might review the movie someday, because this really did impact my life, as you can tell with my own Batman movie that I made. But until then, I'm Super Mario Fan, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Well, that was fun. Now it's time to just clean this all up, you know, put it in the pile over there, we'll take care of it in the morning. Ah, maybe I should review this movie one day. It's not like I've ever reviewed a movie in my life. What's that?